Hey peeps, welcome to Training Thursday. Nice to see you guys. Let me know if you are joining me. Today we have the, um, uh, what my take is on Facebook etiquette and what it looks like to be able to sell into Facebook groups because there are so many groups around that you are able to contribute to in a way that you haven't been able to before access a whole bunch of people that are probably your target market that you've never been able to access before. Like we've got unprecedented access to our particular target market in ways that we haven't been able to, um, you know, if we were offline, we wouldn't have access to all of these other people. But we've all been in groups before where it turns into a big sales fest. Or you ask a simple question and somebody answers you with, here is my la 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 program. And I mean, imagine, especially if you're in a, in a group where you're asking for health advice for you or your child or someone like that, and instead of getting the top tips, you get some big sales spiel. So how can we, um, I've, I've got the four things that, um, that I think you should absolutely do to maximize your potential when it comes to uh, selling in a group and four things that you really shouldn't do at all ever because it makes you really weirdly slimy and salesy. Hey Lise, um, give me a wave if you are just joining us. I can't wait to um, help you guys out. And if you have any questions specifically about this or you've had an experience uh, like this, or you just don't know what to say, type it in in the, um, in the box and I will answer any of your questions as well. Hey Kirsten, how are you going? Okay, so let's get into it. Um, yeah, like I was saying, it's specifically for if you want to, if you're in one of those groups that is health related, or if your target market happens to be practitioners, or if it's uh, a group where you would really, you know that your peeps are in there, the people that you really want to help are in there, uh, how not to appear slimy and salesy, all right? So we're going to start with the four icky ones. Number one, don't just stick your link up. Don't just stick your link up for your new sales page. Like with no helpful tip or no connection to what it's about or none of that at all, make sure you give a little bit of a description, make sure you've got, um, put it into context. So there's a combination of context and content. And you have to give, if you are gonna put up a link, it's really, really beneficial and helpful and kind of just manners to be able to describe why that link is there. So definitely don't just whack up a link and then run away. Um, Facebook groups, the idea of a Facebook group is actually to connect. It's to connect like-minded people in a group. And um, I consider Facebook groups a lot like a lounge room or you know, a barbecue where you've invited a whole bunch of mates over. A Facebook group is a collection of people um, who are like-minded to one another. And to respect the space, you can't just slam up your stuff up on all the walls, right? So don't just slam your stuff up on the walls without context. Uh, number two, don't start a comment with, um, please comment such and such below if you would like to hear more about blah, blah, blah. And then you've got like a big trail of cat's bottom, cat's bottom, cat's bottom, cat's bottom, or whatever the actual word was. Yes, 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 yes. That's got a yes chain and <laughs> It's essentially trying to set up an opt-in without going to the effort of setting up an opt-in. And it's just rude. And what happens is every time, you've got to know a little bit about the Facebook um, algorithm and how Facebook works. Every time somebody puts a yes on there, anyone who's part of that group is then going to get a notification that that actual conversation has been reactivated. Now, that's a clever, salesy, slimy kind of version of trying to find your, you know, information about that. But it's really, everybody else has to see that. And it's not a nice place to be in the conversation. It's a little bit like being in that barbecue and somebody going, yes. And you're in the middle of a conversation with somebody else and someone's going, yes. It's, it's like, ew. All right. Uh, number three, admin delete if not allowed. If you have to write admin delete 
if not allowed at the front of it, it's very likely that you know that it's either on the borderline of or you're definitely going to get it deleted. It takes just as long to find the admin and send them a little note and ask a question whether or not you can put it there. Otherwise, it appears a little bit slimy, right? So don't ever write admin delete if not allowed. All right, last one. <laughs> um, the last one is when you only contribute to a group. So we've got like hundreds of groups. Um, I run uh, the Natrepreneur Hub. I run um, two other groups specifically for my, um, my mastermind programs and, and the club. And, <laughs> and when people apply to be in a group, you get to see all the groups that they are actually part of, right? You get to see all the things that they like. You get to see all these things on their, on their profile. And there's some people that are actually parts of like thousands of groups, literally 1,264 groups. And they're members of that many groups. Now, you can kind of tell why they're members of those groups and they're group hopping just to throw their stuff in there. So what you want to be able to do is join a group where you're actually contributing to the conversation and you're getting a lot out of it as well. But if you're just in there to contribute when it's sales time for you, like, oh, my new course is out, and then you stick your thing up, it's really going to be appearing slimy. Who, who has been on um, somebody's email list? Now, Facebook groups is the new version of email lists for a lot of people. And so if, who's been on an email list and the only time you hear from that person, you don't get regular newsletters or updates or, you know, nice little connections with them. The only time you hear from them is when their new sales thing is out, when their new, their new program is out or when they're selling a spot on a retreat or when they're, you know, and they're not actually having a conversation with you. Who's been in that kind of position? I know I've been on um, a couple of lists like that and it doesn't make me want to buy from them. If that's the only time that they want to talk to me is when they want to sell me something, when they want to get something from me, then they're not in that giving um, rule of reciprocity kind of uh, situation, right? Okay, so there's the four don'ts. Don't do any of those because it doesn't make you um, a nice, committed, contributor to the group, right? Here's the four do's, okay? Here's the four do's. One, be a giver. If you're in, say, the thyroid group and you, are th you're, you really love treating thyroid, if you can go in there every week and help three help by answering three questions with a tip. So some people get themselves all confused and go, oh, but I don't know how much I want to give. What, you know, how much is too much to give? Well, you know, if you're walking down the street or you're having a cup of coffee and somebody comes over and, oh, you're that naturopath or you're that nutritionist and my friend came and saw you for this particular thyroid condition, would you be able to um, just give me your top two tips about what I need to do when I go to the doctor's? right? You're automatically going to know straight off the top of your head, right, what you're going to do. And so there's, there's one or two tips that you could just give off. It doesn't have to be something that's um, practitioner only products. It doesn't have to be, it can be a tip that they would, they would possibly be able to Google anyway, but because it's coming from you, it's going to be really beneficial for them. So when you give that, they then want to give back. It's a rule of reciprocity. And when you are in that mode of, of being able to give something, give a small tip, then they're going to keep searching and see what else you're about. And if they see that you're consistently answering questions that they're interested in, then they're going to notice who you are and what you're speaking about. Do we get that? Now, my poor dog is having a little bit of a conniption. I'll be back in two seconds, people. All right. So... <laughs> Who else works at home with their dog? <laughs> okay, so you can give a little tip. The other cool thing about Facebook or Instagram is that they only have this much room. It's not like you can tell your, you know, your entire ebooks worth of content or um, your entire, you know, degrees worth of information that you have about a thyroid condition in one post, right? But what could you share in one post? that you could actually speak to that then helps somebody. I mean, that's what we're here for. We're here to help and contribute. 
Now, oh, but I'm giving everything away for free. Well, there is the, the sense of giving everything away for free because at the same time, they're not going to remember all of those things. All of that information is spread over multiple different posts with multiple different people that you've helped. And even though you think you're giving it all, all away for free because you are actually the, the receptacle of all of that information and it's all coming out, as the receivers of that information, they're only getting little chunks. So the cool thing is when they actually dive in to come and see you and they click on your face, Facebook profile and then they click on your website, they're going to then get into your world and see what else you have available. So it, does, it feels like you're giving everything away for free, but that's not, that's not the case for the receivers of that information. Oh, Jamie, you've got a puppy too. <laughs> um, awesome. All right. So be a giver. That's number one. Do, do, do be a giver. Now, uh, when I was first starting out, I was doing three posts a week. So I would answer in my three favorite groups, I would answer three posts a week. Then I started doing three a day. And that just blew the lid off people knowing what I love to talk about and how I can help. So if you find your three favorite groups where, where you're particular target market is where your peeps actually hang out and groups that you want to hang out at like I was saying it's a lot like being in a barbecue if you want to be in the barbecue you need to be a nice contributor of the barbecue conversation right and so if you're at a nice group the group that you want to hang out with that you're vibing with and then you are able to give three times a day now this comes from um, Brenda Burchard as well Brenda Burchard's got a whole bunch of really cool um, trainings and he's got some amazing books. But one of his trainings in particular, about five years ago, he said, um, you've got to do the VVO, triple VO, triple VO, triple VO. And it was kind of like triple VO, triple VO, triple VO. What do you think that stands for? So triple VO is value, 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 offer. Now, at the time, he was talking about autoresponder sequences for emails. But like I was saying before, Facebook groups are now a place where um, you are going to have a group of people that are essentially, you know, on a list, but that you don't have their emails. And they're going to be there uh, interacting in a very similar way to what we used to do with email. Now, value, value, value offer. In an email sequence, you give somebody value, you give them more value in the next one, and then you give them more value, and then you give them an offer. It's the rule of three. Now, I know the rule of three from back in the day when I was exploring, like, the pagan world. And when you put out three, threefold comes back. So you're actually going to get nine back. But if you're going for the three, three, you're going for the value, value, value offer, then there is a balance to what's actually going and you being a giver as well as a getter. So if you are going to go into a Facebook group, give value, then go and give value again, and then go and give value again. And then at some point, if, if the group has the rules to enable you to offer something, then you can offer it, right? And then there is a beautiful balance of, of yumminess going around. So, V, 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 value, 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 offer. Cool. All right. So, number one, be a giver. Do it threefold and then offer something. Now, the beautiful balance of that is that you then have, then you are actually contributing, and and you're not in um uh, you're in an abundance mindset. If you're in abu an abundance mindset of giving, there'll be an abundance coming back. All right, number two, respect the space. Running a Facebook group is not like running an email list. <laughs> Interestingly enough, an email list doesn't talk back to you at 12 o'clock at night with some random things happening that you weren't even aware of. There's all sorts of things that happen in the background of Facebook groups that you guys uh, who are just members of Facebook groups may not have an idea of. And um, so giving uh, you a sense of what goes on, it again, it is a lot like having a barbecue at your house. Right? There is a very large space, that's what's in a group, a very large space with lots and lots of people that you've invited in, 
because they're all of like-minded kind of ways. There's something that holds you together in a like-minded way, whether it be the subject that you're talking about or the values that you have, and you're all hanging out in essentially a lounge room. And with that comes house rules, right? There is going to be a set of values and a set of rules that are usually found in the description panel or in the header. <laughs> Now, same thing happens for every group. If you've ever been in the Happy Hormones group, if you've ever been into um, the Paleo Way group, if you've ever been into, like every group has a description and they now have the option of putting in rules. Now, I'm not a fan of rules. I think everyone can be grown ups and we can all sort it all out. But when you are in a group that has a series of rules or a series of guidelines and you're not respecting those guidelines, then just like being at my house, I've got, a, I've got a list of rules up on the wall. It says, in this house, we do real, we do mistakes, we do I'm sorry, we do second chances, we do fun, we do hugs, we do forgiveness, we do really loud, and a whole bunch of other stuff, right? And if those rules and that, those values aren't followed, we have to sit down and have a conversation one-on-one, -on -one, and then if it's still not followed, you're out. Like it's, it, that's just how it works, right? And the exact same thing happens in other people's Facebook groups. When you're in there and they've got their adrenal fatigue group and you are an adrenal fatigue practitioner, it's their house. It's not your house to just go la 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 la. Um, it's their house. So respecting their rules, respecting their space, respecting um, what they have going on in their house and just like uh, your own own house at home, there's going to be different rules for different houses, right? It's going to be slight nuances. But for you in particular, when you're in somebody else's Facebook group, it's really got to take notice of the descriptions and the rules and then not chuck a tantrum if you've accidentally gone over the rules and just, just the same, have a conversation, clear it up and keep moving forward, right? So respect the space. It's like having, like being in a lounge room or a barbecue and you um, have everybody happy because at some point you are going to want to help more people. They are going to want to um, have a crossover of the people who are in there and to be able to show that you have consistently been able to respect the rules makes it all happen for everybody. All right. Uh, number three is uh, respect the host. So just like it being in a barbecue, you need to respect who's, who's looked after it. Now, I have actually done this. I have been in another group before where I was respecting the rules of the week, but I was in actual direct competition. Um, this was me in my adrenal fatigue days. Uh, as an adrenal fatigue naturopath for entrepreneurs. So I was in somebody else's group who was a nutritionist for uh, entrepreneurs and she had just come out with a, um, a course. I didn't pay any attention. All I was worried about was getting my e-course out because it was failing and, you know, I'd spent all this money on it and I knew my target market was over in that group. So I went over and I gave, I don't know, some random tip and I sneakily, slimily hid my, um, my link underneath it. So I've even done it. And I don't want you to have to go through the same process as me where, oh my goodness, it, was, it felt so bad when I got the message back from this, um, this other person who was running this group, specifically saying, look, um, I appreciate what you do. It's exactly what I do. And it's actually in direct competition. I hope you don't mind. I've deleted your post. Please don't post again like that. And, and absolutely 100% in integrity, I was coming from a completely different intentional space. And to, and to not respect the host like that and just randomly go plastering stuff because I wasn't in an abundance mindset was really rude. And um, I was so uh, ashamed and embarrassed that I didn't end up being in that group again. So don't do that. Just go in and respect the host. And when in doubt, ask. It takes like six seconds to type a little quick, just double checking if this is okay. If it's not, that's okay as well, because it's a request. You can get an either a yes or a no from that. 
But requesting it first is much better than having that ickiness and then shame and blame and bleh, all of the stuff that follows. So number three, respect the host. Number four, last one, is, oh my goodness, you don't have any idea how much this is like the bane of my existence running, running a group. But also, um, when I see other practitioners trying so hard to be able to, um, you know, I don't know why social media doesn't work. And I don't know why nobody's following um, me as a practitioner on social media. And I don't know... Have your credentials on display. A lot like, let's put it over here. A lot like if you were a sheriff and you had your star badge here, everyone would know that you're a sheriff, right? Big gold star, maybe a hat, you're the sheriff. What can you do on your Facebook profile that lets people know who you are, what you do and how to then continue to follow what you do. Now, when you are being a giver and you're not actually slimily posting your, um, you know, your uh, link unless somebody actually asks you for it and you are respecting the space and you're, you know, giving three times and then maybe um, giving an offer because you've been so helpful and then you're doing all of those things. If someone clicks on your profile, it's hugely, hugely important that they can tell, one, you are a practitioner, two, you're in business, and three, where do they click to find your business? People, oh my goodness, I just, I have 550 people waiting to get into um, the Naturepreneur Hub. 550, because when I click on them, there is nothing there to tell me who they are. Nothing there to tell me their credentials. Nothing, like some of them are in mining. How do I know that you're actually a practitioner? How, how do I possibly tell whether you are a practicing practitioner or you are just some slimy, weird kind of person from overseas who wants to befriend all of these wonderful women who are in this group? Get on your profiles now. Are you ready? If you are on your computer, you go to your profile, Mine says Tammy Guest. You also say your name, right? You click on your face and then underneath it, it says about, right? You click on the about section and in the about section, it will have a title. Please don't put some beautiful quote. That's very nice and everything, but it tells me nothing when you're in business. If you're in business, put what you do there. If you're a naturopath, do that. If you're a mentor, do that. If you're a pathology um, you know, pathology, naturopath specializing in pathology. Do that. If it gives somebody an idea about what you do, it's really, really helpful. And then, right, that's your about section. Underneath there, in contact, right? So when you click on about, and then there's contact. In the contact section, don't make everything publicly available except your website. Well, and to check, all you have to do is go over and it says, website and you just put your website in there type it away put your website in there and next to it has this little icon you want the world icon on there because you want that to be public you don't have to make your your phone number public you don't have to make any of that other stuff especially if you're worried about security but you do need people to know what you do because Social media is a huge place for people to click and share and and check in and and tell you know, track and see whether or not you are for real, see whether or not you're just trying to sell them something. We've all been part of some of these scams over the past couple of years about people trying to sell you stuff or coming for a coffee, but in actual fact, they're trying to do, you know, that's sliminess. But if you are a qualified naturopath and you have your website on there to find out more details, and if you happen to be starting a new program that you want people to come into, or you happen to have a new retreat, or you happen to put it under the website bit and then people can just click on it and they can find you. So you don't have to put your links in a Facebook group because if they click on your face, they just click one more click and they find your link. Please tell me, I want, I want like some like buttons that you are going to go and check. If you haven't done it already, you're going to go and check your about section on a computer and you're going to change that website detail to public if you haven't already. I need some thumbs up here. 
because it's really important. It's kind of like the new age business card, yet we stress over trying to find um, our business card and get our logo right and all this other stuff. No one goes there. They click on your face and they check your website. Excellent. I got some likes there. Good, good, good. And some smiley faces. All right. So number one, absolutely positively do be a giver. Give value, value, value without expecting anything in return and then give an offer up, right? And go into the Facebook groups where your people are hanging out and answer three questions that are already there. You can put up in the search bar what you want to have a look at. You know, maybe you are uh, Hashimoto's, you love treating Hashimoto's. Maybe you've found out some new stuff about cortisol and, you know, somebody's writing fatigue or someone's right. Go and answer those questions, but answer three of them and then at some stage, if it, being respectful to the group and the space and being respectful to the host, if it's within the guidelines of the group, find out the day that you can do that and share there. Um, and number four is have your credentials on, on display. Absolutely, positively. Put that on your Facebook page, on your about section, on your personal about page. Make sure that you have your website available and people can check and know that that's exactly what you do and you're available for them. And then we go to the don'ts that we covered it right at the beginning. Don't just contribute when you've got some, uh, your new sales page up and ready to go and tell everybody about it, right? Make sure you contribute to the conversation. It's, that's what groups are about. Two, don't start a comment with, Please comment below a yes for blah, 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 blah. Because that's just sneakily getting an opt-in that you should have made an opt-in page for. for uh, number three, don't ever start a post with admin delete if not allowed. It's not the right thing to do. And you know by putting it in there that you probably shouldn't have put it on there in the first place. Four, don't put a post up without any actual contribution. Don't just splatter your link wherever it goes. And I've done all of these. This is why some of us just don't realize until later on and we've made a mistake. So um, don't go splattering it around. Actually give some context for what you're actually putting up there. All right. Hopefully these pieces of information have been helpful to you. And hopefully if you set up those, those four things, Find those three Facebook groups that you want to contribute in the most where your people actually are. Find three times either a day or three times a week if you're just starting out to actually contribute. Definitely go and check your credentials and make them available just like a shiny star on your chest so that people know what you do and they can click on your face and find out within one click what you do. Um, and don't be slimy and spammy. All right, hopefully it's been beneficial to you or somebody else. And if it has, and you've got a pracky friend who you'd like to share it with, don't hesitate to share it. This is also available on YouTube. Um, and these free trainings happen every single Thursday in the Naturepreneur Hub. And I would love to see anybody who wants to um, give us a topic for this, um, please feel free to send me a message and uh, we'll do our best to answer any of your questions coming up in the next episodes. All right, I will talk to you guys soon. Mwah! Have a fantastic week of uh, sharing your message without being slimy. See ya.